Hello guys, welcome you all to day five of exploratory data analysis. During the fourth session, we have discussed about the three-dimensional scatter. You can see. And today, in the fifth session, I'm going to discuss the pair plot. So let's discuss the pair plot. So if you remember what we have, we have discussed earlier that since we can't visualize the four dimensional data sets, there has to be some way for us to visualize our data sets, which has four features, which is sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So these are the four features that our data set has. And we are not able to visualize these data, these things in four dimensional. So there has to be some smart way of visualizing all of this data at once. So one such interesting way of doing it is called pair plot. Fine. So as the name suggests, we actually do pairs. So the one pair that you saw in a plot between sepal length and sepal width before, you already have seen one pair that is sepal length and sepal width before. So now the question is, we have four variables here. So since we have four variables and you are trying to create pairs of two, so I'm asking you about how many such pairs exist. Since we have four variables here, one, two, three, four, and we have to plot a graph between them. So how many such pairs exist? Now, since we have four variables and we are trying to create pairs of two, so we can have four C2, C2, four C2, number of pair plots, what C2 number of pair plots, pair plots. So what is the value of 4C2? This is, this comes out to be 6. So now the question is, since this is a plot where we have a two dimensional plot between two variables, which can be thought of as one plot. So how many such plots can we have? So you can have six such plots. So you can have a plot between, I'm writing here, you can have a plot between sepal length and sepal width. You can have a plot between sepal length and petal length. You can have a plot between sepal length and petal width. And similarly, you can have a plot between sepal width and sepal length, which is already taken care. Sepal width and sepal length, which is already taken care. So I'm ignoring that. So we have, then we have a plot between sepal width and petal length. Then we can have a plot between sepal width and petal width. And you can have a plot between petal width and petal length, petal uh, length and petal width. Fine. So these are the six plots that we can have in total. Now, these are my plots between. So we are going to plot these plots now. That's why it is in pair. That's why it is called pair plots. So these are the plots that you can have. Of course, I didn't write sepal length and sepal width. Sepal length and sepal width because once you have this plot, so this is my what this is my let's say sepal length and sepal width. So I have been written sepal width and sepal length because this is this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. Then second in the second thing, what will happen? This becomes my x-axis and this becomes my y-axis. 
you can say it's a vice versa. So the other plot is straightforward. So you can have six unique plots that you can plot. So when you visualize the six plots, these six plots, you get a sense of what the data is in four dimensions. So this is the hack we are going to do. So instead of visualizing the four dimensional scatter plot, which we cannot, we are going to visualize six two dimensional plots to understand what the data is. And such plot is called pair plot. This is this, these six plot is called pair plots. Well, such plot is called pair plot. Fine. So here I'm going to write a code for plotting a pair plot. So I ask you to type along with me. So let's write a code for the pair plot. I'm going to erase this. Let's let me save this. Fine. Now let's erase this. Let me write a code here. Let's write a code. Simply, you have to write plt dot close. close. Fine. Thereafter, you need to write sns dot set underscore style. And in this style, you have to put this white grid. Thereafter, you need to write type sns dot pair plot, pair plot. Then you have to pass iris, this iris data set, q is equal to species. You have to pass q is equal to species, species, species. Thereafter, there's one parameter for height, h e i g h e i t is equal to Let's write five. Let's give it a five. Then what you need to do, you have to write plt dot so. Fine. Now we have written a code. So now if you just run this, this very simple command in C board called pair plot, you just see SNS dot pair plot and you give it a this uh, iris data set and then we are running on it and this is u is the spaces that means the color is spaces i have defined here height is equal to five so it will color it by the spaces level and you are just putting height to the whole plot i am giving this height to the whole plot so as soon i as i do this what we get here so let's first run this and see what i am getting so I suppose I need to run the previous code also. So let's let me run my previous codes. Fine. Let's run this code, which I have just not written. And see what I'm getting. So if I run this code, I'm getting a plot something like this. Can you see this plot? This is basically my pair plot. Now, Let's digest what this plot is all about. So the first and foremost thing that you will see about this plot is this Lizend. Can you see here Lizend? Lizend is here. So here your blue point is Setosa. This is the Setosa. Your orange point is Versicolor. This is my Versicolor. And this is my Virginica. This green point is Virginica. So, so that's the first thing. Now, when you see here this plot, when you see here, this is basically a matrix of plots, right? So, this is basically a matrix of plots. So, this is my first column. If you see this column, this is basically my first column. This is my, sorry, this is my first row. This is not the first column. This is the first row. And this is my first column. In this matrix of plot, this is my first row. This is my second row. 
this is my third row. Likewise, this is my fourth row. And here, this is my first column. This is my second column. This is my third column and so on. Now, please ignore for now all these diagonal elements. I am asking you to please ignore these four diagonal elements for now. So these elements are called, these four elements, which you can see at the diagonal of this matrix of plot. So these are called diagonal elements. So these plots that you are seeing here, just ignore them for a while. We will revisit them when we learn about the histograms and PDFs and CDFs. PDF is probability density function and CDF is cumulative density function. So we will come back to these points. So for now, just ignore these diagonal elements. Now let's look at all the non-diagonal elements. So the first row is this matrix. The first row in this matrix of plot, the y-axis is in the first row. If you can see this first row in this matrix of plot, the y-axis is always sepal length. Let me write it here. So this y-axis in the first row of this matrix of plots, the y-axis is always sepal length. So this is basically sepal length. This is also sepal length. This, this line is also sepal length. This is also my sepal length. Fine. Which is denoted here. For the second row, you can see for the second row, this is a sepal width. So just ignore this for a while. This is my sepal width. This is also my sepal width. Fine. Now, since it's mentioned here that it's sepal width, neglect this for a while. Just ignore this now, this plot, this diagonal plot. So whatever you see here corresponds to the y-axis of all the plots in that row. Whatever you see here, this, this thing, y-axis of all the plots, this corresponds to the y-axis of all the plots in that row. Similarly, in this row, similarly, if you come down here in this row, you will see y-axis here, petal length. So these, these will become petal length, this will become petal length. And similarly, here also petal width, petal width, petal width, likewise. So now, so we have understood about the rows. Now, what about the column? Let's see what we can do in the column. So if you go slightly down, when I am going slightly down here, you will quickly note that all these values are, column values are given here. This is a sepal length here. So we have a sepal length here, which means in this column, the x-axis for all the plot is sepal length. In this plot, in this column, not in this column, the x-axis for all the plot is this sepal length. Similarly, in this column, the x-axis for all the plots is sepal width. This is also sepal width. This will also be sepal width. This will also be sepal width. In this color, also petal length, the y-axis where here will be petal length, y-axis will be petal length. Like that, y-axis will be petal length. So, so what you have understood, the x-axis is sepal width and y-axis is, you get this x-axis, is x-axis is sepal length and this y-axis is sepal length also in this. That's fine. So, if you pick a plot like this, if you simply pick any plot like this, it doesn't have any x-axis and y-axis. But we can look at this row. Let's say if you pick this plot like this, 
you can see there is no x axis there is no y axis given but but we can look at this row you can we can look at this row and see its x axis is simple width so here this it will become simple width this will become x axis will become simple width and this y axis will become simple length this is my simple length is it is this thing fine for you so we can look at the row and we can look at the column to get our x axis and the y axis what is my x axis and what is my y axis now let's go down and see this column this column corresponds to basically petal if you will just go down what is my petal length this is my petal length so if you will come here and see this column so that means this thing is my petal length so you will get understanding of these things now let's come to something else so i told you that we have six plots but i have told you that we have six plots but if you count here you will see and if you ignore the diagonal elements for now let's ignore these four diagonal elements for now these four diagonal elements for now and if you count here you see 12 plots here if you see here this is 1 2 3 4 5 and this is 6 six plot is above the diagonal and here also if you come below the diagonal this is 1 2 3 this is 4 this is 5 and this is 6 so you can see overall we have a 12 plots six plots above the diagonal so these are called these are called the above the diagonal plots and six plot you will see six plots below the diagonal which are called below the diagonal plots but if you notice these plots carefully if you look at these plots carefully you will notice that they are just the mirror images of each other like i am going to take two plots and i will show you how they are the mirror images of but this is that the these six plots which are above the diagonal and these six plots which are below the diagonal they are just the mirror images of each other since they are the mirror images of each other that's why so uh, we are saying we are having six scatter six six pair plots because if the six are mirror images so they are equivalent so so it doesn't contribute in our analysis fine so let's take these two plots i am taking these two plots this plot and this plot and let me show you how they are mirror images of each other let me take this let me open my pen if you will see this plot if you will see this plot this is my x axis what is my x axis in this plot what is my x axis let's go down and see my x axis this petal length so here my x axis is petal length and what is my y axis here my y axis is petal width so let's write it my y axis is petal width and my x axis is basically petal length petal length this is my y axis and this is my x axis similarly here this is my petal width and this is my petal length petal length so what we have just done is we have made our if you see basically here my x axis is petal length and here my y axis is petal length here my x axis is petal width 
and here my y axis is petal width. So basically, these got exchanged. If you can see here, here in this plot, only the axis get changed. Here, the petal length in this axis, which is in the x axis, get changed to petal length in y axis. And here, the petal width, which was in y axis here in this plot, get changed to x axis in this plot. So basically, axis get exchanged. Rest everything is fine. So we have made this x axis. So except that, except these things, exchange of this uh, x axis and y axis, everything in this plot are exactly the same, more or less exactly the same. So the lesson that you learn from this plot is exactly the same that you learned from this plot. So the whatever intuitions and lessons that you learned from this plot, these two plots are similar, exactly similar. That's why these are called mirror images. So we will, so that's why since the plots above the diagonal and below the diagonal are mirror images, so we will just focus on the top six diagonal matrices and we will do our analysis there. Fine. So let's focus on the top four. So let's take this plot. Let's take this plot. So here, my this is my sepal length. This is my sepal length. This is my sepal length. And this is my sepal width. From the bottom, I have taken this sepal width. So the, this is a plot between sepal length and sepal width. So as we have learned earlier, your setosa flowers, this is a blue color is my setosa flower can be well separated from the non-setosa flowers by drawing a line like this. Let's say if I draw a line something like this, if I draw some line something like this, we can separate my setosa flowers from the non-setosa flower. This was what we saw a little earlier when we were learning about the 2D scatter plots. But the moment I go to this Let's come to this plot. So here, these are fine. We understand this. Now, let's come to this plot. Here, my this is my sepal length. This is my sepal length. And this is my petal length. This is my petal length. So if I can see this, this is far, far, far better. So if you just look at this plot, your setosa flowers are much more well separated from the rest of this plot. This is my setosa flowers. They are much more well separated from the rest of the flowers. So, but if you see here, some of the seto, these are separated, but they are not as good as much as separated as it is here. The here there is a clear separation. There is no conflict at all. There is no intermixing of even a single observation. So the first thing take away from a plot like this is petal length, which is the x-axis, which is my x-axis here. So the x-axis being the petal length. So if I draw, let's say if I draw a something a line like this, let's say I'm drawing this line like this here. I can separate my setosa flowers from non-setosa flowers very easily, easily. If I'm using this petal length as the axis on which I'm separating it. Fine. So here there is a clear separation. Similarly, with petal width. So which is my petal width? If you will just come down and see. If you will come down, this is my sepal width. So let's come here and let's discuss this. So if you similarly, if you just see this petal width, this is my petal width. Petal width, let's put it petal width here. So if this is my petal width and this is my sepal length. 
So with petal width, so here is the x-axis. This is my x-axis of petal width. And this is the y-axis, which is still remains the same. Y-axis is always remains the same in this row. Every value of y-axis will be simple length, simple length, simple length. So y-axis still remains simple length. Even in this plot, my setosa flowers are very well separable from the non-setosa flowers. So the first takeaway is the petal length because the x-axis here is a petal length. The x-axis here is a petal width. x-axis here is a petal length. x-axis here is a petal width. So the first takeaway is petal width this petal width and petal length are able to separate my flowers much, much better than my sepal length and sepal width. These two features, sepal length and sep uh, petal length and petal width are able to separate my setosa flowers from the non-setosa flowers much more clearly then this sepal width and this sepal length. So is this fine for you? No. So now let's understand something else. Now let's come to this plot here. This corner plot. Can you see this corner plot? Yes. Let's come to this plot. Now this plot, this corner plot has a petal width of, let me open my pen. So, right. So, this corner plot has a, this x-axis petal width, this is my petal width and this is the petal length. This is my petal length, this corner plot. So, if you look at this plot, this is super good. If you look at this plot, this is even better than the last plot that we have seen. And which is a plot between sepal width and sepal length. So, let's number this, these items. Let me number this. This is, let's say this is one. If you see, this is one. This is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, and this is six. So I have numbered these. Let me erase this thing so that it is fine. So I have numbered these plots. This is my petal length. Fine. And this is the numbering. So, and what is what about the x-axis? See, if I just go a uh, little below and see what's my x-axis. So, This is basically one. If you can see here, this is basically one. So let's take this as one. Let's take this as one. Let's take this as one. And let's take this as two. This is something 2.5. Fine. This is 2.5. Now let me realign my stuff here. So if I will realign my stuff so that it comes in the order, let's say this is fine. So let's do one thing. Let me erase this and put it in a nice way so that it's so let's erase this thing. Let me erase this. If let's say, let's erase this, let's erase this, let's erase this, fine. 
So now if I again write it, so this is my one, this point is my one, this is my two, this point is my two, and this point is my 2.5. Since I don't have any points after 2.5, so that's why I'm not writing here. So now, so my x-axis here is a petal length, you can see. So my x-axis here is a petal width. And this is a value of 1. This is a value of 2. And value of 3 somewhere here. Here, the value of 3, I am taking this 2.5. So by looking at this plot, which is a plot between petal length and petal width, this setosa, if you wow, this is great. It seems to be a great. So which is the plot between sepal width and petal length? My setosa is much, much well separated. So if you see, it's very, very far away from the other two, two plots. From the other two flowers, that is my versicolor and virginica, this setosa is very, very far away. So it is very well separated. So it's significantly, you can say, separated. So what if instead of drawing the lines uh, and all that, all of that, that we were doing earlier in the previous plots, we were doing line and separating. What if we use the if else condition that we all know in programming? Now, if we want, if you want me to build a model right here, I can build a very simple model to separate my three types of flowers, these three types of flowers. So let's do it right now. It's very simple. So just by looking at the pair plot like this, just by looking at the pair plot like this, I can quickly write a simple model. See, this is my petal length. I'm going to write a model. This is my petal length. What if I say that if petal length is, let's say, less than equal to 2. This petal length is, this petal length is less than equal to 2. This is less than equal to this 2. That is below this line. My petal length is less than equal to 2. What if, if I say, if, let me write it here, if petal length is less than equal to 2. That is below this line. Which means everything below this line. And if my petal width is Wait, this is my petal width. This this axis is my petal. If I say petal width is less than equal to 1, this is my 1. This point is 1, 1. This is my 0. And this is my 0 point. This is my 1. And if I say my petal width is below this line, less than equal to 1. That is petal width less than equal to 1 which means everything below this line, which means I'm talking about this box. If you see, I'm talking about basically this box, this particular box. Because all the points below this line, this is my petal, below this line, this is my petal bit. And all the points below this line, so, which is my petal length. So petal length less than equal to 2. And if my petal width is less than equal to 1, then my flower type is setosa. So I can, this is then setosa. Is this fine? Because setosa lies in this region only. No other flowers are lying in these regions. So if my petal length is less than equal to 2, and petal width is less than equal to 1, then the flower will be my setosa flower. 
So look here, using a very simple statement like if else and a boolean and, we simply build a model to separate Setosa from everything else. Right? Now, since we have separated Setosa here, now look, let's look at your versicolor and this Virginica. Now I'm going to do something with this. So let me erase this or let's save this first and then I'm going to erase this. Oh, these things also get erased. Fine. So I'm going to simply erase this. So let's erase this. Fine. First I'm going to write my next thing. So now, here, what can I say here is this. So this, this has a value of 1. This has a value of 2. This is my 2. This point is my 2. And this is a value of, this has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? And this is the petal length. This is the petal width. So for Sertosa, we write a very simple rule that your petal length has to be less than petal length, sorry, petal width has to be less than 1 and petal length has to be less than equal to 2. This is for the Setosa. And we said that this reason is my Setosa reason. Now what about versicolor? Now your versicolor is basically your orange points. And if you see, mostly points lie between this reason. Mostly, this orange points lie in this reason. If you see, orange points lie between this, this reason. Can you see? In this reason. If I draw a box like this, you can see, my versicolor points are basically lying in this reason. Of course, there are some green points here. But that's okay. We will make mistakes. Machine learning is never perfect. And if you look at it, if I have to draw a bonding box around it, I will say I can draw a bonding box like this. Right? So now let's try to put this into a simple rule. So we can say, here we can say, if my petal width is less than 2, this is my petal width. And this is my 2, this is 2. So if I say, if I can write like my if petal, I can write like petal width is less than 2. And my petal width is greater than 1. And, and petal width is greater than equal to 1. So this reason will get covered, this reason, this reason will get covered, petal length greater than equal to 1 and less than 2, which means this reason, I am covering this x-axis reason. So what we are doing here, you can think of this line as saying petal width greater than 1, this line and less than 1 and petal width less than so by boxing these two, we are getting this whole reason. What about, so this, th these line, my first line is this, my second line is this, let's say, this is my second line for x-axis. Now for this y-axis, you can say petal length is less than 5. If petal length is less than 5, this is my petal length is less than 5. So, if petal length is less than 5, this reason, so it will cover this part. And if petal length is greater than, let's say this is. Let's say 
petal length is greater than 2.5 this is 2 so let's say this is 2.5 or let's say this is 3 or is this 3 so let's take it 3 petal length less than 5 and petal length greater than 3 because this line is a around uh, is around 2.5 Sorry, 3. This is not around 2.5. This is around 3. This is 3. So if I say my petal length is less than 5 and greater than 3. So if these are my four Boolean conditions. So if you do a Boolean of these four conditions, then you can say it is versicolor. So whatever points which is inside this bonding box. I am taking this first thing I am taking petal width less than 2 and petal uh, width less than 2 this less than 2 this and petal width greater than equal to 1 this greater than equal to 1 then I am taking petal length less than 5 this thing and petal length greater than this 3 this 3 so greater than equal to 3, you can put it at line greater than equal to 3. So whatever points which is inside this, this is my versicolor. Of course, you are getting to uh, you are going to get a few of these green points. As you can see here, these green points, few of these green points are coming, which are misclassified as versicolor, which is not ex actually a versicolor, but which is misclassified as versicolor. While they are virginica, but they are misclassified as verdicular. So that error will be there because if you look at it, even in the space of petal length and petal width, your orange points which corresponds to versicolor and the green points which corresponds to verdinica are not fully separable. These are not fully separable orange points and your green points because some of the points are get intermixed. So what we learned from this simple discussion is that using simple if else condition and looking at pair plot, see just by looking at the pair plot, I quickly realized that petal length and petal width are two important features to distinguish these three types of flowers and I wrote, wrote a very simple uh, if else condition here fine so so by just simply drawing your pair plot you have built a very simple model which works reasonably well and of course it's going to make mistakes whenever it sees it's going to make mistakes for points like this for points like this but that's okay. Machine learning is never perfect. You will make errors and it's okay. So what you have learned is pair plot is extremely important. Now let's conclude our observations. Let me conclude whatever we have discussed till now in the pair plot and what is our observation. So let's see. All that I'm saying here is my petal length and petal my petal length and my petal width petal width are the two most important features to identify various flower types fine these are the most important features to identify the various flower types while setosa can be easily identified we have understood this Virginica and versicolor have some overlap and we can just do a simple if else condition to separate these as well. So we can do a simple if else condition to separate my versicolor and virginica with some minor error and that's fine. So congratulations. You have built your first very simple model to separate these three types of flowers using simple pair plot. Nothing more fancier than that.
it's very very simple too so now in the next session we are going to discuss the disadvantages of pair plot fine and thereafter we will start histogram probability density function and cumulative density function that's all keep learning keep smiling keep coming and keep commenting and put your doubts in the comment section i am uh, happy to resolve all your issues so i am going to now uh, ping these things in the github repository so that it will remain clearing is the drawing so let's uh, go to the github and commit this code here dot completed first you need to save this let me write a pay here not completed save this commit yes sync changes okay fine that's all thanks thanks for